Greetings everyone, Brett here with Hammerhead Model Making, and welcome to this special episode. In this episode, we will be looking at bases. So the last few videos that I've dropped, most of my aircraft have been on some sort of scenic base. So I wanted to put together a video explaining how I actually make these bases, because the way that I do it, they're really quite simple. And most, all of these bases I made within a 24 hour period. So there's a few simple ingredients that we're gonna start off with. The first one being this pressed MDF board that I picked up from a local woodworking shop. And then we need some PVA glue, some static grass, and some dirt from the garden. Pretty simple. I'm gonna prime the bases black. I like a black base. Um, I just think it looks nice. You can use whatever you want. You can stain it, you can do whatever. First step is going to be to apply some PVA glue. And I'm going to apply this for this particular base. Uh, I'm going to be applying it all over. Uh, this is going to be one of my, you know, dirt and grass type airfield bases. Um, I do dilute the glue with a little bit of water. Um, and then we just sprinkle on our dirt. Make sure you get good ad adequate coverage. Here I'm just using a soft brush to brush off any of the excess dirt from the side. And you can see there I've actually tapped the, the excess dirt on my mat, then it's just a matter of picking up or using whatever surface you have and pour it back into your container so you're not wasting your dirt. Uh, this dirt I picked up from my backyard. I sifted it to get all, you know, just to get fine grain. I didn't want large boulders or rocks or anything in there. It looks out of scale to me. Now, once the, uh, the dirt is dried, we're applying more glue. However, we're doing this in kind of splotches so that we can apply our static grass. This, I'm just pouring it on, you know? I mean, nothing fancy. You could use a static grass applicator if you chose to. Uh, I don't think that's necessary in this situation. Once you get all the grass on there and get, your, get the glue covered, then you'll just wanna tap off the excess, pour it back into the container, and voila, just like that, we have a grass airfield base. Next up, we're going to be doing a concrete airfield base. So I've got a couple of sheets of styrene here from Evergreen Styrene, and I'm going to cut them into three inch squares. Now, I didn't necessarily go out and measure the exact dimensions of a concrete pad at an actual airfield and scale it down to 148 scale. I'm kind of just eyeballing it here. Um, three inches looked like a good good size to me, and, and I was happy with it. So it's just a matter of essentially measuring it out uh, on my plastic, and then cutting it. The, the nice thing about cutting styrene is you don't necessarily have to cut all the way through. You can just score it and then bend and snap the pieces. Um, I ended up making more squares than I knew I would need, um, mainly because A, it's always good to have extras in case you screw something up, and B, it also just helps to have extras in case I wanna make another base sometime down the road and I'll have some already, some. Uh, squares already made. So um, once you get your squares all trimmed up and ready to go, what you'll want to do is sand, lightly sand the back of them, the side that's actually going to be glued down onto the surface. It'll kind of help give it some grip uh, as you glue it to the surface so it doesn't end up sliding around or coming loose. Um, Another thing you'll notice when I when I do my bases, and this is gonna be true for just about every base that I make, whether it's for an aircraft or a tank or, or whatever, I never do it squared up to the base. I always just think that looks really weird. I always try to offset my base even just a little bit, and I, I feel it helps give it more of a, you know, moment in time snapshot. It's not, it's not perfect. I'm not perfectly aligned with all corners of my base, and I think it just helps add just a little bit extra, um, you know, dynamic to the actual base. So I'm using super glue here. I, you don't need very much. Like I said, if you sand the back of the tile, put a little bead of super glue around the edge, one in the middle, you're good to go. And uh, so now it's just a matter of placing these squares down. I'm first placing down the whole tiles that I can because I will have to bring these tiles to the edge, which means I'll have to cut them. So for right now, I'm just doing the whole tiles. 
but you can see my process is pretty simple. I'm getting them lined up. Again, I'm not looking for perfection. Uh, if you look at a real military base with concrete pads like these, they're not perfect. They're usually done quickly and cheaply. So don't worry about getting it perfect. Um, here I'm just measuring and cutting all of the angled pieces. And, and honestly, it's really just simple. What I'm doing is you see here, I tape it down, put my, my straight edge to the edge of the base, draw a line, and then cut it. Easy, straightforward, doesn't take very much time. And just a matter of going around and finishing up the, the rest of the tiles here. Now, um, you can use this, this, these methods for, for any scale, really. Uh, I, I've used this, these exact methods for both 72nd scale and 48 scale. You could easily go up to 32nd scale, 24 scale if you wanted to, or even take it down to 144 scale and, and smaller if you wanted to. It's pretty easy and straightforward. And, and honestly, you know, it, once you build up your supplies, it's relatively inexpensive. I mean, the dirt's free from the backyard. The static grass will last you quite a while. That little army painter box I had, I think I paid six or seven dollars for it and it'll last you a long time. So really just uh, take your time, put it ever. So now I'm getting to painting the base and I'm going to apply a couple of different colors underneath in this squiggly model pattern to kind of create some, some varied undertones uh, focusing along the edge where the dirt would meet it. Uh, so this is just using that Vallejo brown. I'm not being careful, and, and I'm hitting this with high pressure so I get some of that splattering. Um, I want to create some kind of grain in, in this concrete. Here I'm going to kind of, you know, pre-shade the, the um, separation points between the concrete panels, and then just, again, add some more variation here. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. You can use multiple different colors if you want, just kind of depending on how weathered and worn you want your concrete to look. Um, just really just look at reference pictures, try and match that. This this works for me and it's it's fast and it's simple. So now I'm going to hit it with my concrete color. I'm using the uh, Vallejo Light Gold Gray and I'm just gonna kind of mist this over in thin layers until I've built up what I like. Um, so you'll want to start covering some of that, that color that we've already laid down, but obviously not go too much to get rid of it. Uh, I want it to be subtle. And uh, we will do some other layering on top of this. Uh, but for now, I'm, I'm liking the way it's looking. So I'll go ahead and add my dirt and grass, just like I've done, I did in the, on the previous base. So we're just laying down our PVA glue, mix it with a little bit of water so that it flows easier and uh, really just kind of be careful around the edges. And, and you, you don't have to necessarily be careful around the edge of the concrete. Oftentimes, uh, depending on how well kept up the airfield was, grass could keep creep in to the seams and you know over the edges and stuff. So I, I was kind of going for more of a, a, a worn look here. So you'll, you'll see once I actually put the grass on that I'm not going right up to the, to the concrete. You know, I, I kind of imagine there'd be a lot of personnel walking in and out, vehicles, whatnot. So here I'm just adding some, you know, stains, oil stains, grease stains, things like that. You know, these these airplanes would will drip and 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 then now I'm using a light gray to kind of add some lighter parts to the concrete, you know, maybe some chips or areas where it was kicked up. And now I'm gonna do a panel wash. And I know that sounds kind of silly because I'm doing concrete, but really I want to kind of get some dirt and grime into those separation joints between the the concrete and and also as i'm as i'm rubbing it off you, you can kind of see here how it kind of blends in and, and creates this dirty effect and it, i wasn't necessarily planning on that but i kind of liked how it turned out so just i'm just wiping it off with a normal paper towel pretty simple so uh here i'm kind of mixing two tones of of this uh static grass kind of wanted to go for more of like a summerish hot weather temperate look um maybe some like dead grass you know i don't engine exhaust kicking up and, and over the grass or various things are getting dumped in the grass from from the aircraft from the crews whatever so i wanted to kind of show some some grass that was dying or dead um with some with some regular grass here so i'm just putting my pva glue down straightforward like the last part of the video um, I'm kind of leaving some areas bare I, where I imagine the ground crews would be, you know, walking in and out or they'd be driving their jeeps through there. 
So first I'm laying down the, 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 the deader color and then putting in some of the more greener color after that. Um, but just like before, make sure you get your glue covered. Um, I'm gonna, I'm actually using a little bit of a cocktail stick to kind of drop some grass into some of the, the cracks there. And there we go, done and done. Attach your airplane and you're good to go. Um, I, I really like this look. I think it's a really effective look. Um, again, it really doesn't take that long. I mean, I think the longest part is just waiting for the glue to dry. So pretty simple, inexpensive. Now for this last base that I'm going to make, I actually went out and purchased some perforated steel plates uh, from Edward. Uh, I had a very specific base in mind that I was making for my P47. Um, the, the plastic on this base ended up being way more thick than I anticipated, and it took a long time to cut out the shape that I needed. But eventually I got there. Uh, I had to do a lot of sanding on the bottom, but got the shape that I wanted. Again, you'll see that it's slightly offset. Uh, I, I, I do that intentionally. I just, I think it looks better. Now what I need to do is actually build up some surface to meet the level of that perforated steel plating. So I'm, I'm masking off my edges and I'm going to apply some plaster of Paris, just your standard, you know, craft plaster uh, to help build up some volume before I put the dirt on. So that way it doesn't look like, you know, this big thick sheet of plastic hovering over some dirt. I wanted it to actually kind of come up and meet that level. So I'm just applying it on. And this was pro this base took me the longest simply because I had to give a full, you know, 18, 20 hours for this plaster of Paris to cure correctly um, before I started working on it. Uh, but just, just kind of get it generally smoothed out and ready to go. So I did sand it slightly just to kind of get rid of some of these weird ridges and textures that I had created when I was applying it. Um, but, you know, nothing extravagant. Uh, removing the tape here, I will go ahead and reprime everything, the, the plastic and the plaster, just to give it a uniform base coat. Um, I also off camera painted the steel plating with Vallejo's uh, me metallic steel color. And uh, now I'm just weathering it. This, this steel got really rusty out in the elements. So I'm just adding different layers of, you know, rust and brown and dirt colors to this. And uh, again, off camera, I applied the dirt, but I did it just the same way that I did it with the other two bases. Uh, this time I'm not using static grass. I chose to use these grass tufts. Um, I really, the idea was kind of going for a Mediterranean look here and I wanted to get. So basically what I'm doing right now is just dropping the tuft into some glue and then dropping on the base in about as random as a location as I can. What's nice is it comes on the comes with various sizes, so you can do large and smaller clumps. And now I'm just adding some from some scale leaves. Uh, I, I thought it'd be kind of cool touch to have these little clumps of dried leaves floating around on on the base here. Um, you, you can easily find something like this online for less than ten dollars. Pretty inexpensive, and th and this has lasted me for almost ten years. These leaves. You can see though that I'm getting kind of kind of low there. But there we go, another base done. So here we're, we've got our P47. Um, check out my video on this P47, one of my very early videos, uh, but a very, very fun subject. And uh, here I've got my the pilot and the mechanic there, and it's all done. So um, if you made it this far, thanks for, thanks for watching. Um, I, I, I really like these bases and I, and I like how simple they are. I mean, if you go back to my original, that, that first base with the, the grass, uh, I mean, honestly, you could do that within an hour easily and have it done start to finish. So um, one of the important things, though, is to make sure you're getting quality wood for the base. Um, you can find, you know, wooden plaques and bases at like a Hobby Lobby or, or a Michaels, um, but they tend to be to warp really easily. These MDF bases that I found at my local, uh, you know, wood crafting store, I have never had a problem with them and I absolutely love them. So anyways, uh, like, and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Um, thanks for watching and, uh, hopefully I'll have another video up sooner rather than later and not make you guys wait so long. See you next time.